Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of their Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today, as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, let us call to mind God's infinite grace, a grace that we experience in this resurrection. For the time where we have resisted grace, let us ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy God of the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, which is our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, and mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of the Apostles. The brethren held steadfastly to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. 
And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsible psalm. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. I was thrust down, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my savior. There are shouts of joy and salvation in the tents of the just. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has there been a marvel in us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Praise to the Lord, for his good, his mercy and just forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy as the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 You believed, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, 
called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you've seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I think one of the great things about this season of Easter is that we are presented with so many approaches to the resurrection. After all, resurrection isn't just a single moment when Jesus rises from the dead. It is the experience of the disciples knowing that he has risen from the dead. Today's gospel is one of my favorites. It is one of my favorites because Thomas is in many respects so many of us. Thomas, who says, unless I can see for myself, no, I'm not believing. As I pondered this text, it struck me that there's a voice that is missing. So I'd like you to imagine a new voice. Let's imagine, for example, that we have just discovered in an ancient church in Kerala, India, an old manuscript dating to the first century, possibly written in Sanskrit, possibly authenticated as a text of Thomas himself. Thomas, apostle to the Indies, to his beloved brothers and sisters, of India. I know in the years I have preached with you, in the years I have served you, in the years that I have tried so hard to help you to believe, that many find the fundamental truth of our faith difficult to believe. You say, how can we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Well, I've never really talked to you about what really went on with me that time. I must immediately point out that like everyone else, except for a few of the women disciples, the moment the Lord was taken, I went into hiding. I had decided that I was not going to be a martyr with the Lord. Weakness, fear, uneasiness, unwillingness. Perhaps, let me be honest, let me tell you what is truly my weakness, doubt. I loved the Lord deeply. I admired everything he did. I was there with him from almost the very beginning of his ministry. And yet, I doubted. So when it came to the crunch, I hid. 
I kept hiding longer than the others. I'd heard rumors that some of the women disciples had found an empty tomb, and I just assumed that somebody had taken the body away. Pontius Pilate, being Pontius Pilate, would have done that just to spite us. And then, when I came to the safe house that day, they all seemed so excited. It was like they were on mushrooms. You know, we have mushrooms in Palestine that gives us a sort of strange hallucination. And that's what they seemed like. They were all running around going, we have seen the Lord, we have seen the Lord. And I said, what? Are you mad? And they said, no, no, we saw him. He was here. And I looked at them and I said, well, I'm sorry. I can't believe that. I couldn't believe it. The thought that he'd risen meant that I had been a coward, meant that I had been a traitor to him, meant that I hadn't stood with him, meant that I'd chosen to hide on my own rather than with my brothers and sisters. Yes, God has a strange sense of humor. A few days later, there we were together, and I was still convinced by this theory that my brothers and sisters had been ingesting things they shouldn't have. And there he was. And no, I hadn't been drinking or taking any kind of hallucinogenics. And he looked at me. And he showed me his hands. And he invited me to touch him. I didn't. I fell to my knees. I said, my Lord, my God. And since then, I've had no doubts. That resurrection is real. It happened. I was there. He appeared to me. It was as if he came back specifically for me. Well, I still felt that I had to do something to express my thanks that he had shown me such mercy, that he hadn't written me off. I caught the camel train. One of the advantages of the Roman Empire is trade and it's easy. And I headed out of Jerusalem, headed east. And as you all know, some years ago, I settled here. So when I tell you about the resurrection, I want you to remember two things. First, it is real, I experienced it myself. And second, if you have doubts, I understand. I was the greatest doubter of them all. Just stay with it. Stay with this very crazy idea that God, in God's infinite mercy, can raise Jesus from the dead. And that he not only is risen, but he is with us in spirit. Open your hearts and try. And in your doubt, acknowledge that if you think doubt is so great that you cannot believe, just remember me. My brothers and sisters, let us now share our faith the faith of the early Christians, the faith that Thomas himself came to share. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, from our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For us, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers to the Lord. We pray for all families, especially those who are separated from each other at this time. May God keep them safe as they wait to be able to be reunited with one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our political and religious leaders. May they be gifted with wisdom as they continue to lead us in this critical time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the sick, that they may find healing and comfort, and for the medical staff who care for them, that they may be given the graces they need for this work of mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who struggle with loneliness or depression at this time, we ask that they may discover that you are close, surrounding them with love and gifting them with hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves. When we experience doubt like Thomas, help us to believe in your risen presence and console us with the gift of your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, On this feast of the divine mercy, may we experience powerfully God's loving forgiveness in our lives and be given the grace to begin again. Lord, hear us. Lord, Let us take a moment in the silence of our hearts to bring our own intentions before the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, we bring before you all the prayers we make, spoken and unspoken. We unite these prayers with the prayers of everyone around us, in our country and our world at this time. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. 
fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bible's mingling with wine and of water, where we become sharing the divinity of him who shared our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. All my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And so, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Archbishop, Duncan, his auxiliary, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As the Savior commanded us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my home, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as 
an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament, and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.